Contrarian investing is about doing things differently from everyone else. If everyone's heading into town, a contrarian goes the other way. They prefer to swim against the tide. Some of the most successful investors are contrarians at heart. I went to speak to three of them. First, I called on former Fidelity legend, Anthony Bolton. What contrarian means to me is doing something different from what the majority of investors are doing. And being somebody who's not tied up, who's not influenced by crowd behavior. I think the natural thing for most of us is to be influenced by the crowd. But as a contrarian, you really have to stand back from that. And one of the things I observed when I first looked at charts of the stock market, and I think most people, when they look at a chart of the stock market and see the gyrations, they think it's going to be very easy. Oh, you know, I just invest when it's low and I sell when it's high. But what you find when you live through it, all the background noise and behavior is really pulling you towards doing the opposite of what you should be doing. So actually when markets are high, that, that's when everyone is very optimistic, the outlook looks very good, and, and you're being sort of sucked into that crowd of goodwill and, and everyone feeling happy with life. And it's completely the opposite. When markets are low, many investors sadly get shaken out in, in, in those bad times when they should be just doing the opposite. I think if there'll be some people who, if, if they're honest about it, they, they'll have to say, well, actually, I'm probably not going to be a good investor from this aspect of in investing because you know, when everyone around me is scared and, and the bad things are happening in the financial world, uh, I'm likely to lose my nerve. But if you discipline yourself, then I think you can learn some of these attributes. Back in the city, I picked up with Investex Alistair Monday. He's made a career out of buying what others don't want. To me, contrarian means being willing to look at opposite views, being willing to say the consensus isn't always right. I don't know if in real life swimming against the tide makes such great sense, but for, for investors, it, it's a good thing because markets go off on trends. They go up for a long time, they focus on specific bits of, of news, and then they sometimes go down for a long time, focusing on other pieces of news. And I think that's why it's so important when, when, you, when you do look to recruit other contrarian investors, it don't necessarily go for intelligence, go for a state of mind, because it's very, very lonely um, being on your own and being wrong. My feeling is it's in your DNA. You either have got an interest in buying stocks that go up or you're, you're intrigued about stocks that go down and you're attracted to the bad news um, because there's always the potential for that bad news to turn to good news. Um, so I, I think you've really got to ask yourself, am I happy being alone and being wrong? And if you're not, then don't even bother starting to be a contrarian investor. Alex Wright is another Fidelity fund manager whose starting point is what's out of favour with other investors. If you invest in something which is doing well and um, that other investors perceive positively, it, if those things continue, then you're unlikely to, to make much money. In contrast, if things go badly in a stock that, that's well-liked and well-owned, you can potentially lose a lot of money. If you then look at something that other people don't like um, and there's a continuation of negative trends, you probably don't lose that much money. But if things do change, you can potentially make an awful lot of upside in those types of stocks. The key, I think, with being a successful contrarian value investor is actually to work out sort of which stocks are the value opportunities rather than the value traps. So I tend to spend a lot of time scouring the market, looking at stocks which have underperformed and been doing badly, and sort of sifting through the, the metaphorical reject bin, as, as it were. And, and it's therefore that the stocks where we've done the differentiated work and we can see the, the potential for change that I then buy into. I do think it takes a certain personality type to, to be happy to be a contrarian. And so I do think um, it's not possible to just learn to be a contrarian investor over time. You have to have the personality type that is happy being different, that is happy having a, a differentiated opinion. So there we have it, three takes on a common theme. Contrarian investors, it seems, are born, not made. <laughs>